Tonight's Planning Commission meeting, the June 21st, 2017 meeting. I'll go over a few uh, rules before we get started and call to order and go through the agenda. Obviously, we have a big crowd here tonight. We have two applications. Um, there will be three opportunities to speak tonight as far as public comment. The first one will be a general comment session. If you're here not on one of the applications, and you want to make a comment to the commission uh, in general about planning and what's on your mind, we certainly would love to hear that. There will be two other public comment sessions, and each application will have a uh, public comment session. So if you're here on one of those applications, I suggest maybe if you're here on that, to wait for that time when that session is over. That'll kind of save time. We had a lot of folks here tonight. We'll keep your comments for three minutes. We'll be timing that. I'll try to give you a key when we're getting close to the end. Uh, I'll kind of give you a little So, Any questions regarding that? Okay. We called the planning commission meeting for tonight to order uh, first item on the agenda is to adopt the agenda. Gentlemen, you have a copy of that phone. I'm going to hear a motion to adopt. So moved. So second. Second. As far as the minutes uh, with regards to uh, the last, uh, we're still waiting on those. So you had no minutes to review, but we would have a couple meetings of so minutes to review prior to the next meeting. So they will be emailed us and stuff. Now we get to the public comment session. Again, I gave you the outline of how tonight's business will go. I will open up the first comment session for just general comments. There being none, we'll move along. <coughs> just state your name and the district you're from when you're, when you're going to speak. Uh, we'll get that to the record. So, Phil Irwin, Flint Hill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the supervisors are blessed with having a microphone so that the public can participate in this public meeting. Uh, may I suggest that the microphone would be equally helpful for the planning commission? Thank you, sir. Good suggestion. Everybody talks loud with you and I, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Close the first public comment session and we'll move on to the first uh, item of business tonight. There being no old business, we'll go to new business. Uh, this kind of special exception 170506. This is um, All Now Farm LLC, owner of tax map 5, parcel 14, containing 432 acres, located at 50 Windsor Lodge Farm, Flint Hill, Virginia. An easement owner and co-applicant Windsor Large Lodge Stables LLC of tax map 13 parcel 145 at 24 Windsor Lodge Lane, both in the Wakefield di District, desire a conference center event venue on the All, All Nell Farm property. Um, tonight we're only going to hear the special exception only. The tourist home will be advertised and heard next month. Um, the zoning ordinance refers to conference centers, that is the category it falls under, but what that technically means is that it's for events, so for example it means like a wedding event that could be 100 people or up to 200 people. So that happens to be the name of the category in the zoning ordinance. Um, there were some questions about whether neighbors were properly notified. Um, we feel that the ad was ran in the paper for two weeks as required and that it was noticed at the property and that our obligations have been met. So with that, I will turn it back over to you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Kaiser. And I believe the applicant is um, represented by counsel. At this purpose, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brown, you have, uh, would you like to address the commission on behalf of uh, your uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am Michael Brown, a partner with the law firm of Walker Jones. Uh, we have offices in uh, Washington, Virginia, and Warrington, Virginia. Um, I'm here on behalf of the applicants, All Nell Farm LLC and Windsor Lodge Stables LLC, uh, and uh, its principal, uh, the principal in both of those entities, which is uh, Mrs. Susan Coomley, who's here this evening. Um, 
This is an application which has the unfortunately grandiose uh, title of conference center slash resort, as uh, Ms. Kaiser alluded to a moment ago. Uh, that's only because that's the uh, the name that's applied to it in the list of categories <coughs> used, uh, in our zoning ordinance, and, and it's defined as a uh, use uh, a use which provides temporary lodging, meals, entertainment, recreation, etc., uh, for more than 40 persons in a rural setting. Well. Uh, the, uh, the commission members could tell from that very broad definition of the conference center or resort that there are a lot of different kinds of uses that might fall within that category. In this specific instance, uh, the, applicant, the applicant is seeking uh, permission by way of a special exception uh, to host uh, up to four events, that's four for the entire year, uh, between the months of April and November on the property of Old Mill Farm, LLC. Uh, accommodations for all of these events, uh, which are which will be in the nature of wedding receptions, uh, family reunions, uh, retreats, uh, business retreats by a business, uh, all of those will take place in a temporary tent uh, that will be put up on the property and taken down after uh, after each use. Um, the the access for this uh, for the area where the events will be located crosses the. And crosses the property of Windsor Lodge Stables off of Jericho Road, and that's why uh, the two entities have applied for the use. It is served by a 50 foot wide easement. Uh, all of the parking, which appears in the materials, is on the property of All Mel Farm LLC. Um, it, the, uh, uh, we have submitted in, in the file uh, comments from Randy Norris, he's the engineer uh, at VDOT, and has reviewed the entrance uh, into the property. Uh, he had uh, no concerns regarding the entrance uh, for the use that's proposed. Uh, his only substantive comment uh, was that he thought uh, that the surveyor or engineer, surveyor or engineer uh, should review the stopping distance uh, on the road as it comes up to the entrance. Uh, and that is something that the applicant will have uh, prepared and submitted in time to the Board of Supervisors uh, meeting. There are very few specific uh, conditions, special conditions that apply uh, to this kind of use, two of which don't even apply to this specific application. Uh, two of them relate to if there are going to be the development and construction of any permanent facilities on the property. Uh, these appear in uh, section 170-65N uh, in your zoning ordinance. Uh, in those two cases, since there are going to be no, uh, no new permanent structures uh, erected on the property in connection with this use, they simply don't apply. The other two, or relate to uh, uh, the location of any structures that will be used in connection with the proposed use. Uh, that is, it provides that they uh, must be located uh, more than 100 feet from any property line. Um, the, again, your application materials reflect that uh, this, this, the area for these events uh, is well within the interior uh, of all Mel Farm. And it's largely surrounded uh, by woods because of the location uh, of this area. It's uh, in, in and around the pond area. Uh, it's in a, 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 most of a sort of a natural bowl on the, on the property. Uh, and we, uh, we believe that the, the use, the, the specific event area, uh, is, is likely uh, it's, uh, not going to be visible from any of the properties. If it is, it's only, only going to be very tangential. Um, the, uh, the other <coughs> standard, uh, but then that's the second standard that applies, that is for the screening uh, of the use from, from adjoining properties. Uh, given the size of the events uh, that the applicant intends to host, that is, for not more than 200 people uh, and not more than four events per year between the months of April and November, the applicant has deliberately uh, uh, placed before you a very, uh, very conservative, very limited application uh, designed to minimize uh, any conceivable impact on the neighborhood or on the adjoining properties. Um, uh, of course, uh, would be glad to entertain and have the Planning Commission recommend uh, any conditions uh, that the Commission members feel are appropriate uh, to pass along and forward uh, with uh, hopefully a recommendation for approval to the Board of Supervisors. I'd like to take just a few seconds and have uh, the other uh, family member who's involved in this application, that's Ms. Coomley's daughter, Stephanie Gorham, uh, rise and speak for just a few seconds. Thank you. State your name. You just okay, so we are here today to hopefully help everyone understand the intent of the event venue. Could you please speak up? Okay. 
They need to come right here. Okay. The event venue that everyone is concerned about will only host up to four events a year and a max of 200 guests, which is very minimum and should be little impact on our neighbors. Windsor Lodge Farm has accommodated private events in the past with no adverse impact or traffic issues for our neighbors. Of course, we don't want this new business venue to be disruptive or impact anyone. That is why we chose to only host four events a year. An example could be a wedding, a family reunion, or a business event. The business venue would help generate money for the farm as well as the county. We also plan to promote local businesses for catering, restaurants, spa services, gas stations, and the list goes on. As everyone is well aware, we take great pride in our farm. It would not start a business venue that would in any way have a negative effect on the farm. Thank you. <laughs> I will now open up a public comment session for this particular application. Okay, state your name in your district. And again, we're going to keep this for about three minutes. And I'll okay. give you a, You'd like to stand up? If you don't mind, I think that'd be beneficial for you. Uh, my name is Stratton Sims. I'm in the Wakefield district. And I live one field over from Coomley's. My sister, Darren Winchester, owns that field that's in between us. I also own land that shares a property line with the Coomley's that's known, it's a wooded lot, and it, um, it's known as, a, it's an LLC. Um, for years, when I was in Annapolis, I was a, a landscape architect, and I was at a lot of hearings just like this. However, I have to say, none of them affected my personal, my personal property directly. And I um, am aware that Annapolis at the time was at a watershed moment of development. And, there, and I think Rappahannock is at the same place right now. You know, everyone says, if you want things to be different, you have to make a change. The opposite is also true. If you want things to remain the same, you can't change too many things. Um, having said that, um, my family and the Coomley family have enjoyed good relations for a long time. My father and Freddie were friends. They enjoyed being members of the, you know, the original lunch bunch, and they fought on it together. Um, although the Coomley's cattle are not on my land right now, or my sister's, they were for decades. They wandered freely from one meadow to the next. I firmly believe that people should be able to do what they want on their private property, up to a point. And if one has to think about where one draws lines, what those lines look like, and when one draws them. I don't have the answer to these questions, but I think we really need to look at this at this time. I have no issue with I have no issue with the idea of the B and B. You know, and we'll discuss that later. But my concerns about the event venue are traffic, and I think that's a big problem. And I certainly do not encourage anyone to think about expanding the roads at this time. Uh, the bigger issue for me is sound. Meadowbrook is across the street. They have a lot of events there, and I hear everything. I can practically participate in conversations that are going on. So I am concerned about that. I know that sound comes from the Kumoi property because we hear their harvesting operations for weeks on end in the fall. But we accept that because it's farming, and they're a real farm, and they're trying to do it properly. Um, so I know that um, we're in an unusual environmental situation because of our mountains, and we're lucky. But I just I think that it's um, I'm not against the idea that any of us trying to figure out how to be fiscally sound and keep our properties you know out of the red. But I think we really need to be careful about how we proceed. And I think we need to know more about the details of this and the sound issue before we move forward. 
It's not, a, I'm not definitely a no, but I just want to know more. Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen, lady. Uh, my name is Gus Forbush. I live at 39 Foxhall Farm Lane with my wife Sandra. Uh, I'm having on her farm. I uh, feel like a newcomer to Rap Hank. I've only been here 35 years. I've seen a lot of changes that somebody would agree with. This, there's no way in the world we can agree with it for a number of reasons. We already have four venues right there. We have Wakefield School, you can rent that anytime you want. We got Meadowbrook, got something going on this weekend. We have Lane Gordon right there, you do a great job. We have Batman <coughs> Cellars right there. Go in the corner and you walk here and you got married. So the market's saturated. We don't need any more of this there. We need our peace and quiet. I'm old. I just had a triple bypass operation. I need my, my, my doctor told me not to get excited, so I'm not going to. So but we're just thoroughly against it. And my number one reason is safety. That bridge that was just put in by VDOT, we have a brand new bridge. I just measured this. I went down this evening, measured my truck first. I have a GMC pickup. Outside with the mirrors, it's nine foot, right? That's one truck. Another truck gets in a bridge at nine foot, and you got 18 feet. I measured the bridge. I didn't, I just picked a random point. The inside of the guardrail is 21 feet, four inches. You know, are you saying you're a numbers man? I know. All right. I came up with a calculation of we have 40 inches to be shared three ways. You figure the middle, one, and then on each side. So you have 40 <coughs> inches to deal. You divide three and 40 inches, you got 13 inches clearance. Now that's if the trucks get in square. The access to this bridge is absolutely horrible. It's terrible. So bad that the B dot poses these signs. Now that is a right angle, 90 degree turn. Now they lowered the speed limit to 25. There is no possible way two vehicles can meet on this bridge. So it's 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 horrible. This thing should have been corrected in the beginning, but as we all know, it wasn't. This is a disaster. All right, now you got 200 people back there. So conceivably, you could have 200 vehicles. You feel your uh, caterers, your bartenders, your uh, support stuff. So. Yeah, so we have 200 people. All right, this thing doesn't end until the party doesn't end until after dark. 200 vehicles coming out of that bridge, out of that road, down a steep hill at 40 at 45 miles an hour. Now it's supposed to drop back to 25. Will it? Who knows? All right, say there's an accident in that bridge, and there will be. Uh, yeah, I, I'll bet on. And the roads stop, stopped up. People are hurt. You need rescue vehicles. You need a lot of help there. All right, it's at night. There's no lighting down here. Halfway through our road is a farm called Windrush, Longs Marie River. That house catches on fire. All right, we got to have the, the, the fire trucks, Jack, we need a tanker, we need, we need help in there. How are you going to get there if our road's closed? You can't. The steel truss bridge is obsolete, downgraded to 11 tons. What is, what is your fire tanker weight? Can you get over that bridge? I don't know. I don't know. That's the fire chief that came to that. We, we, I think we understand. You get my point? We get your well, that's just one reason, but I also would respectfully like to submit a petition to this board. Right um, here. Well, not good, as you can tell. Um, these are uh, adjoining and adjacent windows. I believe I got all of the adjoining windows. Let's add this. I don't expect the county to reimburse me for the notification process. But we didn't get on the So we got some words about that. User. So uh, I would, if I had time, I'd like to read that. Right. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave you a couple extra seconds. So well, I, I would like to explain these names now. Some of them aren't, but not less than I can explain them all. Most of them are here tonight. Do we have any questions? We'll uh, put their number, phone numbers on there. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I have a lot more to ask. My name is Tom Calvin, and I'm a, uh, a Wakefield, and I'm a uh, I share a boundary with the uh, Comis. 
um, there directly to the south from me. Uh, I have major concerns for noise. Um, one of the other issues I have is there are going to be parking issues, um, lights. One of the things that's nice about Rappahannock County is they want to keep it dark and you don't have to see headlights or whatever. And the other main issue that I have is several years ago, I think it was the Jordan River Farm tried to do something similar to this. But when they did have an event, noise issue. <coughs> I enjoyed living in the country. And that's why I, that's the way I feel. I moved out here, I used to live in Potomac, Maryland. And Potomac, Maryland used to be like Rappahannock. And I don't want to see Rappahannock turn into something like Potomac. Thank you. Runoff Sam with Forbush, 39 Foxhall Farm Lane, the Wakefield District. I am strongly opposed to the proposal of Mrs. Coomley and family in making a commercial venue of her farm, Windsor Lodge, Arnell Farm or any of her land. I have lived and owned Fox Hall Farm since 1977, and my husband has been here for 35 years. I'm a very proud person and love the peace and quiet of where I live. Mrs. Comley's farm is right across the road from Fox Hall Farm. I am very upset over how this will change our lives and how it will affect Rappahannock County and devalue my property and all the farms and houses in town. My husband and I are not in good health. Gus had a triple bypass surgery in March. I am in constant pain, crippled and slumped over in my back from an automobile accident. I know what it is to have a life debilitating accident. Why would he want to listen to traffic of 100, 200 cars up and down the road, country road, with a very dangerous hazardous curve outside our barn entrance? Why would we want to listen to music and 200 people partying and drinking? This is so unreasonable even to consider. I ask all of you on the board to visit Fox Hall Farm and see our land and how close it is to Windsor Lodge and see how quiet and still and peaceful its surroundings are. Also to see the road with the dangerous curve. It's a real traffic hazard connected with this application. The traffic will be ongoing for days and weeks in preparation for an event. What will this do to the value of Fox on Farm? that has been in my home and I love it. Who would want to buy Fox Hall Farm right across the road from a commercial, commercial venue with 200 people drinking and driving on a country road? Who would even consider purchasing a farm with such close proximity to this? This farm is to be my daughter and granddaughter's inheritance. I have been protecting and caring for this salt farm since the beginning, knowing someday I would pass it on to my family. My daughter used to ride her bike on the road. She now jogs on the road when she visits. I hope my grandchildren will do the same. Horses are ridden up and down our road. Farm equipment and tractors are used on our road. We have neighbors that walk their dogs on the road and jog up and down the road. 30 seconds. How much? 30 seconds. 30 what? 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Cross Wakefield Country Bay School uses this as her training ground. The, the highway, to, the proposal quotes a limited number of events and short distance from Zachary Taylor Highway, therefore minimize the traffic. The distance is not short. It is one and a half miles from our entrance as you approach Fox Hall Farm, there is a new bridge with a very hazardous curve. Put 200 people on the road with alcohol involved, 
caterers employed, help musicians, outhouse providers, staff providers, and local traffic, and you have a serious problem. Why wasn't this road straightened when they made the new bridge? Who are the people who are going to be driving on this road? Where do they come from? You never know these days who carries firearms. Will there be police protection? Should we be concerned for our safety? Public, when you open your lane to public, anyone can come. What is happening to Rappahannock County? This is our future, the future of Rappahannock County. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, I'm Jean Clements, and my husband and I are residents at 2098 Jericho Road in the Wakefield District, and our property adjoins on the east Mrs. Coomley. Mrs. Coomley called me about a week ago and told me that her farm had not been profitable for a number of years, and that she was making this application as a means of raising revenue in order to be able to continue to maintain the farm. I can understand the issues with farming because my husband is a beef cattle farm. But I do not favor this application. I want you and Mrs. Coomley and her family to know that my husband and I hold no ill will toward them. We have been guests at their farm, and they have been guests at our farm. But I am concerned that if this application is approved, it will fracture the relationship of those who live in the neighborhoods. And I might add that although not on your agenda tonight, I have not heard from anyone in the community that they have any objection to her forthcoming application for tourist home. Stay focused on the yes. tour map. I just wanted to make that point. Thank yes. you. So speaking for myself only, because I am concerned that if approved, the application would fracture the neighborhood and still not give her the revenue that she needs to keep the farm in operation. I respectfully request of Mr. Brown and Ms. Cooley and Ms. Forms that they withdraw the application and pursue the other options that Mrs. Coomley told me on the phone are already legally available to her. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> David Connick from Stonewall District. Uh, I don't have any, I don't live near there, and I don't have any fish to fry in this particular application except the integrity of the zoning ordinance. And I'm very troubled by this application compared to, uh, for example, the Fletcher application that was last month because it sounds to me like what they want to do is almost exactly the same thing. It's a bunch of, uh, I don't know, field parties basically, unspecified in number and all the objections that the board of supervisors heard I don't know, we had a big crowd at the supervisor meeting. They didn't show up here <clears throat> last month, but the concerns that were expressed by the neighbors were virtually identical to these concerns that these neighbors have expressed, and yet somehow it's in a different category, and I really don't understand why that is. And it was my suggestion uh, at the hearing that the supervisors had, it's my suggestion tonight that really you ought to take a look at this provision of the ordinance at the field party provision of the ordinance and the festival party uh, provision of the ordinance because they're all the same type of activity of lots of people coming in to lots of different events and yet for some reason, and I'm not sure what that reason is, they get into different categories and one, they just say, okay, you've got a blanket permit 
But when Fletcher wanted a blanket permit, everybody said, oh, no, you can't have a blanket permit. You might have uh, thousands of people coming there, and there are hundreds of people, and the Ku Klux Klan might show up, somebody said, and so forth and so on. But <clears throat> I think all these, what I'm saying is all these things ought to be treated in a similar way, and it isn't fair to these applicants, or Mr. Fletcher, or anybody else who applies, to have it treated differently. And I think before you approve this, and I noticed that Mr. Brett, Brady's not here, and Mr. Light's not here, Mr. Henry's not here. It's Mr. Brady's district. I think at a minimum you ought to defer this until next month so that all the commissioners can have their, this is a big thing, and see what they want to do. And I, I really think that the best thing to do is defer this and, and, and the others as well, and really take a hard look at the zoning ordinance and see what changes ought to be made so that all these type of uses that are similar in nature like this are all treated the same thing. My name is Monica Ward, and I live in Sperryville, Virginia. I've just heard two very different versions of the story from Mr. Connick and Ms. Um, Coonley's attorney. I heard four events a year, and I heard a limit on the number of people at each event. And I live in an area at Ashby and Woodward Road in which there were four events a year for a number of years held by my neighbor, John Halbert, in support of his business. And as long as those events were four a year, they were quite tolerable in the neighborhood. Even though they had their traffic issues and the roads weren't quite ready for them and there were some issues with fire and rescue being able to get in and out, a lot of things that weren't ideal. The neighbors being part of the neighborhood were willing to support Mr. Halberg in the pursuit of his business. He wanted to expand that into far more events, and we got together with him and talked to him about that and cap on it, and that didn't happen. So it seems to me that as long as certain restrictions are placed on the number of events, the perhaps uh, the time that music can be played into the night, there are a variety of different things that are available under this process as far as I know. Four events a year does not destroy the tranquility of my neighborhood. And it, I don't imagine it destroys the tranquility of any part of Rappahannock if it helps to maintain the open land and the use of the land as it is now uh, primarily being used. Thank you. Someone else has their hand up? Yes, sir. My name is Gail Johnson. I live at 1709 North Pose Road in Wakefield District. Uh, I'm quite a ways away from the Coleman Farm, so the only uh, impact would be basically traffic that decides to come in on North Pose Road off of, uh, of, of uh, 647. And that's a very uh, windy, uh, <laughs> difficult road. And that would be a great concern to me uh, if, if people decide to go that way. Uh, other than that, I am 100% in agreement with uh, Stratton uh, Sam's position on it. Anyone else? I now close uh, special exception 170506 public comment session and turn uh, to the commissioners. Um, gentlemen, we are a little polite tonight. There's uh, vacations and so forth, but uh, we do have a quorum. So, um, Mr. Burke, can I start with you on your answer? Absolutely. It seems to me here, uh, the question uh, at hand, there are two real questions. One is the impact on the neighbors with respect to noise and, and perhaps light, but probably noise is the main one. And the other is the reasonable availability of the property uh, from a transportation point of view. And um, okay. It seems that there are means to limit the noise by uh, in 
with respect to the hours that uh, music and uh, loud noise are available. And there isn't much means of limiting or changing the road. And uh, it would seem to me to uh, that further study or, or a better understanding of what I have anyway ought to be spent on uh, arriving at uh, uh, the uh, or ascertaining that the road and transportation accessibility is sufficient for this kind of a thing. Uh, that's that's basically my concerns about it. Uh, in, in limiting the uh, amount of noise to uh, very reasonable hours and making sure, I, I would think this is something that the uh, Department of Transportation could be uh, uh, asked of and pass on. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Mr. Brown? Well, I agree um, we need to have a better understanding of the traffic situation. Because if there's a narrow bridge, I drove up through there, I couldn't find a place, but I, I drove right past it like I used to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems that more neighbors oppose it than agree with it. So we have to take into consideration the opposition to it. They need to get together and try to work out something where they can come to agreement with the neighbors before we approve or disapprove. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, Chairman, a few thoughts. Uh, I am focused on the fact that this is up to four events a year, which doesn't strike me as, frankly, that many for a property which, again, in comparison to a previous application, um, was, was a lot more events that were proposed. But four seems a manageable amount. Uh, in the application, Mr. Mr. Brown is pretty well, pretty well written, pretty well thought out. Uh, but as Mr. Bird said, uh, the devil's in the details here with the uh, conditions that we may need to come up with here uh, with respect to concerns that I heard from many of the neighbors as it relates to noise and light and traffic. Um, we don't have an opinion or a letter from our fire and rescue folks about what they think of being able to cover uh, events like this. And I am a little concerned whether or not the parking screen is adequate as they described it. I understand it's screened by the topography, but probably want to look at that a little bit closer or understand that a little bit better. Um, but is it development? No. I heard somebody call it development, and I don't, I don't would call it that. It fits with the comprehensive plan and the concept of the county to promote ecotourism. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure I buy into the police protection and firearms argument. I'm not sure I buy into uh, the fact that there may be 200 vehicles at every event, even though there may be up to 200 people. But maybe uh, that's worth mm -hmm. taking a closer look at as well. Um, point being, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, it would, I think, be good if, if this board had uh, an opportunity to take a half step back and look at this in its entirety. Uh, maybe there's a checklist that we can come up with that we can use not only for this application, but 
application, but ones we've received in the past to make sure we're looking at everything. Because I think this does, you know, this, this may have a uh, you know, this may have an impact on not only uh, this area, but also any applications that may come forward or ones we've seen so far. So, and, and there is the matter of the representative of the Wakefield District not being here tonight and the commission being a little bit short on attendance. So, I think this, I, I think this because of its magnitude, it's a little bit more study and I'm of the mindset that we perhaps uh, table it and take it up for further consideration and bring it back to the planning commission before it gets moved to the board of supervisors. But that's my, uh, that's my question. Uh, just a couple observations, uh, gentlemen. Um, I've traveled that road, Jericho Road, a lot of times with an officer, and not so much to a little older, but uh, tend to stay home a little bit more these days. But, uh, um, uh, my concern kind of dovetails to what you said, Mr. Bird. You know, I first thought about it, I think coming in off 522. You know, it's a fairly decent road, not that far up to the entrance where you turn to uh, go to, to where this uh, structure is at. But coming from the other way is concerns me more. In this day and time, where everybody has one of these and we'll get them the GPS and uh, they punch that in. And it typically takes them through not, not the safest way, but sometimes the back way. And, uh, and that's okay. It's a nice scenic ride through there, um, no question about it. Uh, but to your point, it was uh, not as, uh, condition of that road is not as good as it is coming off 522. It's seven miles. So I, I, I would say that uh, maybe, uh, maybe that goes in line with having uh, more information from VDOT and what the impact of, uh, of, of an event or events, uh, each adding up to 200 people. And I would agree with you, John. I don't know that I potentially 200 cars, but uh, typically that's not the case. But I guess we have to look at it at the worst case scenario. And um, what's to say if there's a uh, fire apparatus that needs to come from Mr. Atkins' area in Amosville, uh, and they come through the back way and have to come in through 647. Um, so I think that has to be a consideration as well. And I think that goes along that checklist maybe that we were talk, we talking about. It's, it's just too easy to ask our volunteers, our, 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 our folks in the fire and rescue uh, Association, what they think. A lot of years of experience out there, a lot of them natives, they understand these roads, and I, I think that uh, maybe that's a valid, uh, a valid block to check, if you will. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not, Mr. Connick made a, a good statement. I think uh, someone, when he was our first speaker tonight, talked about Rappahannock. Maybe it's a watershed moment for Rappahannock County. And, um, we have uh, have some robust uh, uh, laws codes on the book that allow us to enjoy what we have today. And people that sat at these tables before we got here, uh, thank goodness for their wisdom. Um, and, and maybe we are at a point where we need to revisit uh, and codify and uh, put some limits on these type of applications. And I don't know what that is, but I think it deserves probably the discussion. It might be, uh, include us, VZA, uh, uh, even obviously at the board level to, to maybe brainstorm on this. Um, there will be another event, and I don't think four events is too much to ask at that location. I've been there uh, a couple times, a uh, long time ago, uh, when your husband was living here. And, uh, when they're working on that cabin and you know, putting all that nice rock and old, gosh, beautiful place back there. I'm going to have a wedding there too, probably. But uh, I, I think it's time for us to maybe have those tough conversations and then revisit that. So 
I've got across. But getting back to this particular application, I, I would tend to agree. Maybe there's a little more, uh, a few more answers we need here, and it may give the time for the, for the neighbors to communicate a little bit and, and look and see what other options are uh, that might make this uh, an easier passage, at least to me. Uh, I don't speak for the other commission. I don't think this is out of line from what we've had uh, before. But it's a, it's a little different time, I believe, personally. Any further comments, gentlemen? I have a question. Uh, you know, Mr. Chairman, I think a couple of points. I, I, I don't think, in fact, that there are four other competing venues in this area that necessarily mean that we can't have a fifth. Um, uh, I think the market will sort that out. Um, but I, I agree with uh, the underlying theme here of the concern about the traffic and whether or not we have proper road infrastructure and what is, in fact, uh, supported by that bridge. You're not going to have three vehicles trying to get over that bridge. It's, it's a rural area. Sometimes you will have. <clears throat> one one lane bridges, and I know this one's not a one lane bridge. So, but I do think that needs to be looked at. Um, so, to and then fire and rescue also. So, you know, to, to that extent, I think that's where the you know, I would, I would think we need a little bit more work and get a little bit more uh, input. Agree with everybody around the table on that. Uh, with respect to your thoughts on taking a look at all of the ordinances, um, I'm in danger of bursting into flames here when I say I agree with Mr. Connick. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> 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 well, he raises some good points. Uh, and, and, and perhaps there's a way of uh, trying to have better tools available to us, and including maybe a checklist that you all mentioned here, uh, because I see more of these in our future, and I think we all want to make sure that we get this right. I had uh, one other comment, too. I wasn't aware, but I understand that someone said that the Wakefield School, I'm assuming their cross-country team, trains on that road. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, that um, and I, I think weddings are usually on a weekend. I don't know if they train on weekends, but that may be information that would be valuable for us. What about the preparation for that that be coming during the week? Yes, ma'am. We've, we've made note of that. So. <clears throat> well, what it would seem is that we need to have a program as to uh, building and uh, making the checklist protocol, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I suppose that uh, is, is this something that uh, the zoning office can do and can contact the uh, Department of Transportation, the fire departments, and, and, and create a, uh, it would seem to me, they are the people who would know what the checklist ought to be better than anybody. And if we had this, it would not only be useful for this particular instance, but as I think everybody here agrees, uh, any further uh, uh, applications that we might uh, hear. And this is something that one could then give to the applicants and say, here, these are the questions you're going to be asked. And uh, what, the more that you can answer effectively, the better it will be for you. Any further discussion, gentlemen? Motion on board? Do I have a motion? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. One other, one other point. I would, I would not want this to necessarily drag on. I mean, I think you can go to any other surrounding jurisdictions. You know, applications that have this side of acreage and this potential impact. It could take a you know, couple of few months to approve. We have a, a little quicker here, for better or for worse. 
Um, I think they're going to be talking about pulling the throttle back a little bit. But that said, I think if we're going to do anything like this, even though we're getting into the dead of the summer, we probably got to figure out how we're going to do it and move on smartly. Because not only this applicant, but, uh, but others, one other specifically, is waiting to hear from us. With that, I, I guess I would, I would make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to table this application um, until such time that we uh, better understand um, the traffic implication uh, of the area and also to have an opportunity to um, look, at, look at this in its, its totality and, um, so that it can, we can develop some kind of a guideline for um, reviewing the application of the magnitude of the future. <coughs> I know that's worried. I might, I might have strayed a little bit there, but I'm just trying to capture a couple of thoughts. Ms. Kyle, can you repeat or capture those particular requests? There's a motion to table this application until traffic implications and the opportunity to review in totality for guidelines for reviewing applications of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. To add to that as well, um, I would like to understand more about the school and their activity on that road. Uh, again, I doubt that that's on the weekend, but it would be certainly good to check that off. I think you know, I can tell safety. I have a question when you finish. So, thank you. Gosh, gentlemen. <coughs> So, do, do we have a motion here? We have a motion to, uh, as, as amended by the uh, chair. As amended by uh, my one item there. Is it up for a second? It is. I would second that. Any further discussion? All in favor of tabling this with the conditions uh, that uh, we have articulated. Uh, Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. seven or eight years in Powhatan County. Um, he also has the background of being a law enforcement officer, state trooper. So um, he comes to us with lots of experience and we're so glad to have him on board. And he will be handling all the zoning 
questions and concerns and issues. So feel free to visit the office. Um, right now, he is right beside of me, so we are getting to know each other really well. And I'm kind of a office. I'm a um, in the office. So. <laughs> that's right. You so, see me, you see Debbie. That's right. So uh, we don't know where he'll land, where his office will be, but once that's decided, we will certainly let you know. Well, 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 thank you. As a former zoning administrator, I could say that's probably going to be the last time you're going to get in. Yeah, I apologize. I've done that at the beginning, but I have. Uh, it's going to be a gym day, I guess. The next item of the business is. Uh, Rezoning application RZ 170508 Ohara LLC Legacy Farms Liability Corporation. Ms. Kaiser. Um, this is for 17, as you said, 0503. It is the Old Tala LLC owner and Legacy Farm Market leaser of the property located at 12167 Lee Highway, Sperryville, Virginia, a portion zoned general commercial and a portion zoned agriculture in the Piedmont District, desires to rezone a part of the agricultural portion of the parcel to general commercial to allow a retail farm market family business. The use is allowed pursuant to 170-134A through J of the Rappahannock County Code. And if you don't mind, I'd like to take a moment and just give just a <clears throat> touch of history on this. Um, this is an application that has been heard before, which was known as Cooters or Otala LLC. Um, keep in mind that while this has been up before the Planning Commission twice, it was never heard or a determination made by the Board of Supervisors. So this will be the third time to the Planning Commission, but again, it has not been to the Board of Supervisors. Um, I had a question during the week about the cease and desist order that had been placed on Cooters and what that meant um, for this application. There was never a formal cease and desist. Um, I met with them. We agreed. Uh, we mutually agreed that they would not continue business at Cooters, and then they since closed. So there is not a cease and desist order on this business, and nor have they been conducting business as leasers of the property. They have the right to go in and um, renovate and have construction of the facility, and that's what they've done. But as of today, uh, the business has not been open for operation. Excuse me, Ms. Carter, for a point of clarification. Mm -hmm. I don't think these are tenants. I think they intend to purchase the property. They do intend to purchase the property, but currently they are not the owners. So right. this is under. Okay, so right. you're calling them a tenant or a lessee. Right, at this so point. Until such time that they close on the property. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and as you indicated, they are, um, they will purchase the property shortly. There has been um, one significant change since the last application, and that was that VDOT has since forbidden parking in the front of the building. So for those of you that have been here, you know lots of people pulled in the front. Um, when Mr. McCarthy was here, he added a boundary adjustment in the back because parking needs to be on the same parcel because it was dangerous up front um, to park in the front. But again, VDOT has come forward and said that will no longer be allowed. And so what they're asking for is that boundary adjustment that was in the back to be rezoned to general commercial so that there will be parking availability for their business. Um, I think that's it. Thank you, Ms. Kyle. When the applicants are here tonight, I saw them. Yes, yes. Over here. Hey, sir. How are you doing? Good, uh, thank you. Would you like to address the commission? Yes. Maybe if you could come up uh, to the front there. Is this your whole family? Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to introduce them. I'll be the one speaking for us um, because it is a family plan. So our plan is to have a family business. This is my husband, Alan, myself, Tracy Atula. Our oldest daughter, Dina, who is a culinary student and will be a part of our business in the baking and the deli side. Um, 
Zach is our son. He, from a very young age, has a, had a passion with farming and growing. So his part of the business will be gardening um, in, the, in the back part, um, the ag property, and um, growing and, and farming will be his part of the business. Our youngest daughter here, Lexi, um, is at this point going to be a breeder for our business. <laughs> she was very concerned that she didn't actually have a, a part there in the business, of, of an actual job title. So we gave her the job title as breeder. So, um, Alan and I are the purchasers of the property um, at 12167 Lee Highway. In Sperryville, we reside in Amosville and Hampton District. Um, about our business, I just wanted to touch base what the, the base of our business will be. Um, the focus of our business is going to be to provide farm table products. Our plan is to include products from our family farm in Amosville as well as other local producers. We plan to be open six days a week with the hours of 7 to 5 p.m. with extended hours during the summer and fall seasons. In the retail area of the store, we'll be offering farm fresh meats, variety of fresh produce and farm fresh eggs, jams and jellies. We also plan to offer baked goods and homemade breads as well as um, in-house made ice cream. Our deli part of the business will offer fresh made order made to order sandwiches, um, a variety of hot specials that will be offered daily, and our food service will be for carry out. Legacy Farm Market is consistent with our county's comprehensive plan. We will contribute to the economic growth of the county through our food and beverage tax. We will promote tourism and we'll also offer employment opportunities for our local citizens. We also intend to continue the rural and agricultural character of Rappahannock County. The past uses of this property have been farmers market, deli, antique stores. As far as my research has shown, it goes back to 1928, where it was Bradley Atkins service station. And we've actually found many pieces of Bradley Atkins left within that building that we plan to preserve and actually have on display within the store. Um, we are currently, some of the issues that came with this property um, were a well, um, there were water water issues. In the past, um, we are currently having a well, a new commercial well dug. Um, we are addressing light issues, all of our lights for any signage we intend to have downward facing. We want to be compliant with the night skies, the dark skies of Rappahannock <coughs> County. And um, there are two current lights that um, are on during nighttime hours that we are working with Rappahannock County to, uh, I'm sorry, Rappahannock Electric to have replaced. They're gonna be, we're gonna continue to use them, but we're going to replace them with night sky, the dark sky compliant um, lighting that is now offered through Rappahannock Electric. Um, we do not intend to have large events on the property. Um, the septic also was an issue that was actually replaced in 2013. Um, it's a small septic. We have a perpetual easement um, for the drain field for these. So we have take, we have addressed those issues as well. We do not intend to have a public restroom because our food is carry out. We're not required by the health department. Um, we have considered and are looking into other options to be able to offer that to our customers. But at this time, we've chosen to um, have no public restroom. The current parking area in 2013, there was a boundary line adjustment like Mrs. Kaiser did address. Um, I think that there's no question as to why the boundary line adjustment was approved and recorded then. It was done for the safety of their customers and the purpose for parking. It's been in use even though the zoning process or the, had never been completed in 2013, but it has been in use. That's been the the parking area for this store since 2013. It has been recorded. 
was verbally approved and recorded, recorded since then. Um, I did contact VDOT. They are strongly opposed. They um, forbid any parking in the concrete slab area that's in front of the store, which is the original parking area for that store. Again, going back to 1928, when it was originally a Bradley Atkins service station, um, they've asked that we barricade that front concrete slab so that there is no vehicular access at all into that area. They have taken a look and they did their site, site distance studies and they've approved the entrance that we have on Route 211 and also the entrance that we have on Old Hollow Road. They, they meet both, um, both meet their stops, their, their um, stop site, site distance, site distance thank you. Um, we are asking for the rezoning. At this point, after 2013, the property line adjustment was completed, again, approved and recorded. It's been in use, however, it, it was never completed as far as the zoning. So we now have, from the back of our commercial building forward, general, we're zoned general commercial. From the back of the building to the edge of the property, um, it is zoned ag. And we are not in compliance with our zoning um, ordinance. And my husband and I are, again, the purchasers of the property. Um, we have a ratified contract. We have agreed with Mr. and Mrs. McNear, um, representing Old Hall LLC, that we're going to do a delayed settlement. There's no contingencies. We've agreed to take possession. We've started on our remodeling, um, general remodel of the property. So there's no, um, there, but there are no contingencies on the property. It's just a matter of a deferred settlement. Um, so I lost track of where I was. Um, so our zoning, we've, we've submitted this application for the purpose of parking for our customers. Um, it's a safety issue. Anybody in has, I'm sure everybody at this point has been to this property. We're, we're just feet from 211. It's actually, I was told by VDOT that it's against Virginia state law to have a, anybody, any vehicle backing out of that property on the, uh, the current concrete slab. And our application is asking to rezone the existing gravel parking lot area, um, in which I've submitted the pictures you can see. Um, in that rezoning, we've, we've had to add 0.06 to make sure that we clearly add both entrances so it's not a problem in the future going forward. We wanted to make sure that we've addressed all those issues um, and we have done so and in, in, in this application we're asking to um, rezone again with that an, an additional small boundary change included um, but our, our application is for the rezoning of just the gravel area. We did purchase additional ag land. Um, we intend to keep that in ag use. We're gonna be growing um, crop on there, so that's, there's no question that won't be used for um, any kind of parking. Again, we'll have no large events. Um, we're, we're planning no large events. And it's really this rezoning is in need to be able to operate our business and be legally um, in ordinance with our with our county zoning, as well as um, number one safety to our customers and ourselves and our children who will be there on a daily basis. I think that's it. Before we turn to the commissioners, I'll open up the public comments for the 17.50 waiver I want to speak in favor of this application. Uh, I've known uh, Tracy for about a year and gotten to know her very well. More recently, got to know her husband and and her children. I have I have enjoyed getting to know her family. They are an ideal family from my point of view. They're they're very family oriented, they, the kids go to Rappahannock, you may have noticed it, Dina was on the winning basketball, basketball or volleyball, oh, oh, oh. volleyball team uh, this year, uh, 
Tracy and uh, is always at the events supporting them. They are they are the epitome of what I think are the good families, young families that we want to support in Rappahannock County. Um, they're very excited about this business, and as she said, they intend to run it as a family project um, and keep it hopefully in the family as their kids grow up. I see absolutely no downside to rezoning, <coughs> rezoning that property um, as commercial. In fact, I can't understand why it wasn't done before. So, ask for approval. Okay. My name is Jimmy Swindler from uh, Delmo Hall Farm. I am not a neighbor of this property, but uh, I grew up in Sperryville. I drive right past uh, this property probably three or four times a week on my way to visit my mother. I hope to be driving past it in about 10 minutes because I've got a little convertible that wants me to take it to Skyline Drive before it gets dark, and if I don't do what it wants, then it won't start. Uh, but I wanted to come here tonight uh, really to echo many of the comments that this lady just said. Um, you know, obviously it's a no-brainer as far as this location. It's commercial, and it's, it's always been commercial. A variety of different guises, sometimes shuttered, but always commercial. Um, but to the family itself, and my remarks are really more directed at any neighbors that may be here. Um, I've gotten to know this family uh, in the two years since their children have come into our school system where I'm employed, and they are just darn good people, and I can't imagine that they would be anything other than darn good neighbors. Um, I think every commercial business wants to be a good neighbor. Um, sometimes things, profit motives get in the way. Um, if they do things that may irritate your neighbors. I don't see that being the case here, um, ever. And I mean, like I said, my experience with these people has been wonderful, and I, I, I would suspect the same will be true for any of the other neighbors in the area. And while I have the opportunity, I also want to say thank you to all of you on the board. Um, I think most of us know how thankless this job is and the fact that you all are willing to come here and do it. Um, first, I know you get paid so well. Um, <laughs> but beside that big paycheck, the fact that you're willing to do it, I really appreciate what you do for us here in the county. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Matthew Black. I live in the Vermont uh, district uh, on Fletcher's Mill Road. Uh, we're almost neighbors. We're maybe five or six uh, minutes uh, away. Um, I've known Tracy uh, for about a year, and um, Alan more recently, and gotten to know some of the kids. Uh, and uh, I guess I'm a I'm a hopeful customer. Uh, the, the only thing missing tonight is some uh, some of that homemade ice cream. But, uh, uh, I'd like to add my support, uh, and I know I speak for my my wife on this, although I, that's treacherous ground to speak for your wife. But uh, uh, but uh, I know she also supports this application. Um, we, we keep talking about the, uh, the importance of, of re retaining good families here and, uh, and promoting businesses, and uh, if not retaining businesses. Um, uh, this, this speaks directly to that. We, we talk about uh, the, the tourism, and, and that's something uh, along. So we talk about agriculture. And it seems like what, what uh, Tracy and Alan and family are trying to do here is something that, that actually addresses all three, uh, tourism, business, uh, as well as agriculture. It is, it's almost a food to table uh, kind of arrangement here. Uh, I've seen what they've been doing over there. I just really admire all the work. I just, I'm not sure I put that much money into uh, uh, re re restoring that place, but you have done an amazing job. Um, so it strikes me that the, that the proposal, the request rather, is a very modest one. Um, it's, it's just for this parking. Uh, even though it's modest, though, it's, it, it's imperative. Uh, without that parking, there's no business. Uh, so it, it so it's it's as essential as it is modest and and seems eminently reasonable to me and I hope that you will grant their application. Thanks. Thank you. Andrew Taylor, Piedmont District. Uh, I am a neighbor of my I own well, which is to say, I own property, two parcels up from uh, the subject property, and I objected to the McNear application because it seemed plain to me that. Uh, ben Jones wanted a fairground, and that his commercial expansion uh, was far greater than what he was applying for. Um, what the Abduls are applying for seems to me to be entirely consistent with the historic use of the property, and uh, I have no objection. Thank you. Chairman, and uh, so I own the property that's across Old Hollow Road, on Prince on 211. It's actually, there's a little error in the application. It's, it's actually owned by an LLC, Riveton LLC. It's not owned by Peter Chairman. But I just want to say that I have no objection to 
their business or the parking area being used for the business. Uh, I am a little concerned about a blanket general commercial rezoning because as a, someday the Abdullahs will not run this business and someone else might come in and want to put something else in there. So I would ask them if they would be willing to proffer off other uses other than parking lot. In other words, so that it is a parking lot only and not just anything that can be done in a commercial zone because there's a whole long list of things that can be done in general commercial zoning that we might not want on that corner. I have no problem with the parking lot and there is a process where the applicant can proffer, I think, and they haven't yet, I don't think, but they can do that, I think, anytime until there's a public hearing before the Board of Supervisors. I think that's <coughs> correct. So if they would be willing to proffer off everything but parking in that area, I would certainly feel much more comfortable than having seen the county just rezone it carte blanche, you know, uh, commercial. And then someday down the road, we have something else coming in there, permitted by right in general commercial. We started off with a one-tenth spot zoning, one-tenth general commercial, and now we're, if, it's, if it is rezoned general commercial, it's going to be four times the size that was originally spot zoned there. It's going to be four-tenths of an acre instead of one-tenth of an acre. Now, I don't know what can come in that space. You know, and it's still four tenths of an acre, it's not a big piece. But there are a lot of things in general commercial zoning that we might not want there permitted by right in the future. I, I'm totally in support of their <coughs> business and they're using that for parking. But I have to repeat myself, I just don't think we should carte blanche rezone it. They should, I'm asking if they would be willing to proffer off everything except parking. <coughs> I'm Steve Hensley. I have a farm over in Castleton. Um, when Cooters had that property, uh, I quite often took farm workers over there to get to get meals. Um, it was good food. It was inexpensive. Uh, it was a cool place. Whenever we had guests, they always wanted to go over there. Um, I uh, and part of the reenacting unit, which is going to be working with Cooter at his new location for Cooter's last stand, which occurs in July. So I was over there inspecting the property last weekend. And, um, you know, there's a slamming business over there. I mean, even that old Outlands bike parking lot was overflowing with the amount of people that's in there. Um, they've now rented places all over the Ray. Campgrounds are full, hotels are full. So, I'm not saying who said what, who did what, but when we lost that business, what we gained is all the air pollution from those cars as they drive right through our county to go over to the next county. So, I don't know these people personally, really. I mean, my daughter does sports and things like that, but that's all I know. What I'd like to see is a nice business back in there. And if we start nickel and dime in the zoning again, we're going to run into these problems either, you know, soon down the road or with the next business. I mean, just give them the zoning, give them a parking, let them get into business, and then hopefully, you know, I've got another place to go eat in this county and take people and things like that. So I, I have no objection. I would really like to see this thing get take off and get going. So I just ask that y'all approve the zoning. I mean, it's out there on a four-lane highway. When when somehow two festival halls got put up adjacent to my farm and nobody cared about the traffic, the pollution, the trespassing, I cannot see how we can object to this place where it's situated in the past or in the future or right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dave Connick again from Stonewall. I, uh, I want to agree with what Sharon Luke said. Uh, uh, I think she's exactly right. And uh, first of all, this, I mean, and I also want to say that I, I met the folks there and they're very nice people and uh, what their business proposal is is all great. But that doesn't really have much to do with the decision that's before you, and that is should the property be rezoned or not? Because, like Sharon said, someday they might have to sell it or they might move away or whatever. 
<clears throat> and the issue is, I mean, I frankly misunderstood the application when I saw it. Maybe I didn't read very carefully, but I didn't. I didn't see a drawing that showed that the park that was going to be rezoned is only the gravel parking lot. So that's a big comfort. I thought they were going to rezone the whole thing. Uh, and that I would oppose. But even the parking lot, I think it should, if that's what they want to do, they ought to proffer it. Because, as Sharon said, once it's rezoned to comm general commercial, I mean, uh, who's got the ordinance tonight? Go look in there. There's a whole long list of things that they could put in there. They could, they could raise that building and put all different matter of things, and then they or some future owner could do that. And I think that would be a mistake because this was probably a mistake to spot zone that when it was done. And we already discussed that in the previous meeting and the other, one of the other applications was up. <clears throat> so I think that was a mistake. But anyway, there it is. I think for the safety reasons, great idea. Let them have the park in there. They, if they were proper, that that's all to make a proper, that no one will be used for a parking lot and the existing footprint of the store is not going to be changed, then that's great. But if they're not going to agree to that, it's a whole different ball of wax in my estimation and it would set a precedent because once you expand it, as was said, it's a, it's a, it's a quadrupling of the commercial area. Some other neighbor adjacent to it will say, okay, across the way, I want commercial zone too, and that's not a and the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan has a map in it of exactly where future commercial development is supposed to be, and it's up by the co-op and the bank and all up and around in there. It's not in this area. And the other thing I would like to say is that uh, in addition to it not being in the comprehensive plan as an area, I think it's a policy one, goal five, maybe I have the goal and policy but backwards, of the comprehensive plan says you're not supposed to take any land out of agriculture and put it in commercial unless all the other areas of the county that are designated for commercial now or in the future in the comprehensive plan are can't handle it and you couldn't make that finding so this and that's your primary <coughs> job to find out if this uh, uh, complies or is in, in, uh, with the comprehensive plan so it's only going to be for the park and I don't have a problem with that but uh, it's going to be for general commercial I think there's issues thank you my name is Kenneth Carter. My wife and I own the trading post, the uh, gun shop right on 211. I've been there for 24 years. And I'd like for everybody to look at this from a different perspective. How about ulterior motives? That'll give you a different thought. Trip. You have an honorable thing. You have to go by your laws, your covenants, everything you're dealing with. They have their ulterior motive is to have a business for their family. That also is honorable. They're doing it at the best they can. I've known these people for years. They're trying harder than anyone should to get what they're getting. My ulterior motive, which no one has talked about, is business is dying in this county. I've been there for 24 years, and if I don't get more traffic and more tourism out here, this county is going to die. Seriously, I am down 60% of business. When Cooter, and I'm not a fan of Cooter, so don't get me wrong with this, <laughs> but when Cooter was there the first time down, down in Storyville, and traffic was so solid, you couldn't get out of my lot. And then he left, and he went and he came back up where they are now. And I already saw a little bit of a pickup, just a little bit of a pickup, and it was gaining. So that was my ulterior motive. There's nothing wrong with ulterior motive. Everybody has them, nobody admits it. So my motive is I want to keep my store going. I do everything I can for the school, for the fire departments, everything. I'm not going to be there if this keeps up. And if we keep this, this tight hold on everything and everybody without taking a deep breath and thinking, OK, yes, this could cause problems in the future. They can be dealt with in the future, too. Nothing is in stone. Nothing in this world is in stone. It's constant change. So I would like to see Alan and, and Tracy have this place. I know them. I've watched them work through it. I've known them for years. And I don't see anything wrong with what they're doing. And it would help me. It would help the county. It would give us traffic. It would give us tourism. It would give us a place to go to or through. We don't have that now, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Mary Bragg, and I'm not going to show up 
Mr. Connick, I did not meet with you when you came by. My husband was there. Um, and I just want to respectfully um, ask that my um, application move forward with no proffers. We have been completely transparent. 100% of what we're doing, our door has been open at all times. Um, what we want is just for parking. If VDOT has permitted, pro prohibited us, from parking on this concrete slab in front of our building. And our application is not approved to allow us. I, I approached Mrs. Kaiser's office with other possibilities on how to use this, this section of my, our property for parking without a rezoning application. And it was referred that we do a rezoning application. So that's why we decided to go this route with it with the rezoning application. Our intent is to use it for parking. I've been 100%, again, transparent what our intent is, what our goals are. Um, I ultimately, this business is for me to be able to pass down something to my children to have them come back. They are the future of Rappahannock County. I have a son who's 14 who is a future farmer. I have a daughter who is going to be a senior in high school next year. She's going to go to college. I want her to come back. I want them to have something to come back to. I want them to be connected here. And I would just like for my application to move forward without any proffers. Thank you. Thank you. We now close public comment session. That's for the second time. Uh, for sure, this time, 1705. Who we Gentlemen, uh, Obviously, this is in my district. Um, let me take it uh, on the front end here. We have no objections. Uh, uh, I'm very familiar with this property. Uh, I, I, since I was a kid, I, I remember when Bradley Atkins was there. And, uh, I vaguely remember him. You know, short man running through that building there as it's progressed through the different, different owners and different uses. Um, uh, I, I, I'm excited that uh, you know, it just doesn't become a fixture on a corner and deteriorate, and it's a uh, new life there, if you will. I, I, uh, I think it is certainly in line with our comprehensive plan. I'll tell you, uh, the rezoning uh, of any piece in that many county uh, concerns to the highest degree, and uh, I think I. I Typically, I'm totally against that, and I think this is probably one property. And I just live up the road, less than a half a mile, so this affects me too. I, I'm talking as a neighbor, uh, as a landowner, uh, that this property may have some impact on me. Uh, but I do think this is probably uh, the one place that is worthy of a rezoning. I understand about the proffer. Uh, not having a proffer, but I, I, we have to look at this, I believe, gentlemen, is what is going to be the what next. And if we don't place a proffer on it, if it's, I, mean, I can't imagine you doing anything else with that small piece of land uh, for the parking, the gray area, the gravel area. But what we do know is, is you can build up if there's not a proffer. Uh, that would be an ugly, uh, building or situation sitting on that corner. There's other issues that come along with that. 
And I'm not saying that will ever happen, but I think as a planning commission, we have to look at the future. I have no doubt you've got an extraordinary family. I have a lot of, I say, research on your family. You, you, uh, I echo what everyone here has said. Um, and I'd like to be uh, sitting on that hill when I retire and seeing your daughters and your son still out there doing what they do. And I believe they will. But that's coming from the heart. Uh, we have to really think about what's good for the county. And uh, I'm in support of the rezoning, but uh, with a profit that is for part. And, uh, I could go on and on. I don't know of anything that concerns me here other than the parking on the front of the building that's been taken care of. And I understand, uh, I believe, there's going to be some structure in the front to block that off. Yes, sir. There's going to be a three board fence. Um, <clears throat> VDOT re um, requested that there be some type of a barrier installed there to prevent any vehicular, vehicular access at all. So our plan is to add a three board fence. Again, it will go with the um, farm field of the county, the agricultural field of the county, as well as what we're trying to um, create that property to be. I'll just make one other comment, Jim, I, I think this application is it's Spent a lot of time in it. I know you've spent a lot of time. Uh, this, this, the applicant spent a lot of time, boots on the ground, if you will, getting to know the community and the folks around them. That's extraordinary. I know that's Mr. Pure, Mr. Brown say that all the time about the community and getting to know your neighbors. And you heard it earlier, and I, I, I totally agree. You all done an extraordinary job with that, and I want to compliment you on it. Thank you. Uh, but uh, I'll turn it to the commissioners. And Mr. Zinsky, would you like to go? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, I, I, I don't have too much to add other than I did have an opportunity to visit the property. I had an opportunity to speak with uh, Mr. Abdullah at length. In fact, he wouldn't let me go. <laughs> I did not distract myself there. Uh, but it was just such a, it's such a great wrap of story, you know, that they you know, went away to Northern Virginia, worked in business for 20 years, and now they come back, and they're really creating Type of business, the type of business that I think we really um, want to you know, want to have in Rapid Hand, and, and then there's the community spirit of uh, providing employment to our young people, not only family members <coughs> but mothers. Um, I'm really encouraged to hear the support of other local businesses for something like this, and I'm so favorably impressed with the attitude of asking for permission instead of begging for forgiveness. Uh, and that encompasses a lot of what you're doing. I, I know there's some other things in there that weren't discussed. I know you're burying overhead electric lines. Uh, you're very environmentally sensitive and done some work with VDOT with respect to making sure that you know there's no problem if, in fact, there's any underground tanks there from back in the old days. Um, you know, leasing land to grow food that you're going to serve in, in, your, in your business. Um, I understand the purpose of the planning commission is to not sit here and you know you state all that and catch you on back necessarily, but I have to say I just thought this was so well thought out and your family is so dedicated to this that um, it made a it made a, a great impression on me. Um, and so I'm just joining up. It's just, this is not a reputation that um, I think we should just really get our arms around and support as we can. Mr. Brown. One thing for me is important also. Good neighbor relationship and keeping the young people in the right hand. If you look around the room, people that are coming to Rappahannock right look like me. <laughs> So, anything that will keep young people in Rappahannock, <coughs> I will vote for. They're only asking to rezone the parking lot. You cannot operate a store without a parking lot. So, I am 100% for rezoning the parking lot only. That's all they're asking. Parking space, which we should approve. 
That's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Mr. Burke. It feels, it seems to me that we're in a situation where uh, we are dealing with a dreadful mistake. And the mistake is, how can anybody have a business on one-tenth of an acre? And the result of this, it, it is the result of uh, what could only, one could only think of as a poorly carried out previous zoning decision by the county, which at least in this situation is crippling the reasonable use of the business, which has been ongoing for many, many years. And so that as far as I'm concerned, we think that we are passing judgment on this particular business. I look on it as this particular business is passing judgment on us. And that if we, and the, I, I can understand the idea of a proffer, uh, but it seems to me that in as much as uh, this business is going to depend on the parking to conduct itself. It may have to depend on other things too. And to deny them that possibility, it seems to me a burden. And I would just finish by saying, what is it that they can do on their 0.4 of an acre that is going to hamstring Sperryville. Any other discussion? <coughs> Being no discussion, I uh, am ready to make a motion. That uh, 170508 Omaha LLC, Lancy Farms, uh, make a recommendation to be approved uh, the next level for consideration with the proper of the boundary line adjustment for the rezoning component of this before parking. I have no other concerns that's not been addressed. Is that a motion? Yes. I second. Any further discussion, gentlemen? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, can I just ask if you would repeat the motion so I can make sure I have correct my notes? Is it with the proffer? With the proffer. That it only be used for the proffer. Your next uh, step will be the board supervisor. Thank you. Thank you.
So we you guys. So those wedding tickets. You guys have to get home for your homework. Gentlemen, the uh, next item on the agenda is old business, old business is the amendment chart that we worked on. I guess, um, as you know, we had a lengthy chart that was reviewed with recommendations. So the next step will be to have a public hearing. So with your permission, we will run that ad and then add that to your agenda for next month if that is your choosing or we prefer to wait until um, a later date. Uh, Mr. Brady has uh, resigned from the Planning Commission. His term is up, and so he won't be coming back. So we uh, placed an ad in the paper, but it may take a while to put him on. So I don't know if you want to wait till the end of summer vacations and have the public hearing on the charge or and, until he's replaced or if you want to go ahead and do it next month. So, your decision, John. What do we have next month that we know of? Um, I guess the discussion on the Fletcher application. We have um, the Fletcher application. We have the bond filage um, application, which is a special exception for events and uh, the return that we want to the tourist home, and then also um, the special, the special exception from yeah. time. So you should probably have four applications. I think we ought to defer this to the end of the summer. I think the Fletcher uh, could be two meetings. Correct. And uh, I think that it, uh, we ought to save our fire for our employment parents. So your concurrence with that? I will leave it. I'll give the body of the work on this. So, we're looking at uh, August, September. August. August. How about the September meeting? Is that too far? And September would be that. The reason I say that is because there will be two meetings for the Fletcher application that will continue to have a draw a significant crowd. I would think. Uh, not knowing what my other applications might be. We don't have a little bit of a number five as well. We're all in agreement then. I think that's very wise. We need a motion on this or we can go with this. So I'm going to just mark it in a minute. So. Yeah. Everybody's in agreement. Yeah. Um, the same thing that you want done in preparation for the uh, Fletcher discussion last month? Well, it would seem that we could get the same thing done for the all mill farms. That might be a two for one. Yeah, if the concerns are similar, I'm not going to say they're the same, but the big application. Yes. Yeah. I may make a request, and I can't think right off the top of my head, uh, some other applications that we've approved in the past uh, with similar events and or um, style of application, just to kind of get a base 
after doing a lot of while, you kind of forget what we've done in the past, uh, whether it be Mazel or uh, all We did one for, for Greenfield, uh, the uh, Gregory uh, property, yes. very similar to that. What was, uh, I, I don't, I think it was 200 or less. Right. It's a smaller, that's my so recollection. Maybe 150. Okay, sure. 150 or 200. So I, I can do that through the email and just uh, maybe we can research that in uh, similar applications and uh, what we've done with those might give us a baseline. Yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. proposing a work session of some sort? Uh, or just a basic push to the glass. The glass. So, uh, with regards to um, uh, again, similar applications, maybe the result of the other. Cliff Miller, there was a his and uh, the conditions we put on him and the number of events and requirements and uh, so forth. I, I'd just like to refresh my memory on the first one. I think that would be a very good way to start. So we can, we're not really speaking from memory. Uh, sure. You all are excellent at the I'm sure. Plus, your Al Henry will be back in the moment. He's got a great memory. You know, sometimes he remembers stuff that he never questions. The question about it. <laughs> Tell him if uh, you have nothing else, I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Next week, July 18th.